Welcome back to Samsta Games, the place to find new strategy games. And today we're going to play Vigo World War II Stalingrad. Now this is a war game that focuses on the Battle of Stalingrad. You can play for either side. This game is really interesting because this game has simultaneous turn-based combat. So this is quite different from regular turn-based combat because in regular turn-based combat you can kind of like wait to see what your enemy does and then move and then attack and etc it's not quite real time because in real time you can change your mind essentially you can see how the enemy moves and you can choose to like stop or withdraw but with simultaneous turn-based combat you have to sort of prep and then it just kind of happens and at the same time your enemy preps and whatever they do just happens together so it's kind of it's a little bit different because you can't you can't quite like change your mind halfway through, you have to wait for an accident. So it's quite interesting and a quite unusual. Now we're going to be playing the Sixth Army Strikes battle and we're going to be playing on the ally side. Now this is not going to be a typical let's play for me. I want to focus on like explaining the mechanics of the game and how it works more than the actual let's play. So we're certainly not going to finish this scenario. However, I want to make it clear that this is not a guide either. This is just a very quick introduction to the game. The game has a manual that has 106 pages, so you can definitely learn a lot more about how this game works if you want. This is just going to be a quick introduction so that you can tell, hey, is this game for me or is this game not for me? So uh, we're going to go to the historical background a little bit just so you, you sort of get this thing going. On uh, July 23rd, 1942, the Axis launched Operation Hero. The purpose of this offensive was I an OK W Directive number 45. The task of Army Group B is to develop the Dawn defenses and by thrust forward to Stalingrad to smash the enemy forces concentrated there, to occupy the town and to block the land communications between the Dawn and the Volga as well as the Dawn itself. Sixth Army Strikes covers the first three days of this operation. Our goal is to gain more victory points than the other side by destroying enemy units and or capturing objective hexes. Points are awarded each turn to the player owning the following objectives hexes okay so we can here see like what do we need to own and etc so let's just jump in and play now you can also play it with somebody else it doesn't have to be against a computer a computer you can also play a campaign and you can also add a bonus to the ai if you want to make this a little bit difficult you can turn the fog of war on or off and you could even watch an ai versus ai game which i think is quite interesting but we're going to be playing ourselves so let's see what happens okay uh, so it's actually jumping to a different window which is slightly irritating for my recording so let me just switch this over to this all right so here we are in the in the sort of scenario mission and here you can see the army information. We're not going to go through, read through that, but you can see a lot of information here. You can see your land forces, the weather, supply points, when are you getting your reinforcements and etc. Now currently we are in the setup phase. So in the setup phase, what you do is you can choose where your units are going to be. So you can click and drag, you click and drag and that moves one unit. And you can also move multiple units at once by, it's kind of weird because you have to click on them once and then you click and drag them sort of both together. You also wanna make sure that you always move your HQ close because the HQ can see what is it it's supplying. And if your units are not going to be supplied, then you're obviously going to be in trouble. So you wanna make sure that you always do that as well as you can. So I'm just moving this sort of around a little bit quicker. Um, obviously if you play this, like if you wanna play like the whole, um, so now you're going to take a lot more care to this, but right now I'm just sort of quickly moving this through. Uh, we also have units, you can zoom out of the map like this and see the full map. You also have units down here, I'm honestly, I'm not going to do anything with them. Again, this is not something that you should be doing if you're playing it yourself, but I do want to focus on showing you a lot, a lot of really cool parts about this game. So we're just going to focus mostly on the fighting up here. And we'll move this HQ down. Now I believe we should be getting some more reinforcements here. So I'm honestly just going to grab this. Uh... Should I do I want to grab? Oh, you know what? Let's just grab it all. It's fine. No, we'll, we'll grab it. Oh wait, we can move it because we're waiting for the reinforcements. Okay, right. So, so they're only going to come. They're not quite here yet. We'll leave the bottom part there kind of the way it is. Okay. Now. 
Next thing I want to show you is you can click on any of these units to gain more information. So for example, you can click on this and if you right click, you can gain additional information. So here you can see what is this all telling you. So first of all, let's talk about these circles. So these circles are telling you the health, the strength and the supply of each of these of this particular thing. So for example, uh, the, sorry, the first thing is readiness. So this is how fresh a unit is. Readiness is reduced by unit actions and low readiness will reduce your effective attack and defense values. Then you've got strength, which is how much damage you can do, or like the measure of number of men, things, guns in a unit. And uh, you can lose strength from casualties and from being encircled, which will first reduce your readiness and then your strength. And then this is your supply. Obviously, if you're not well supplied, then again, you will lose. Um, strength and other things so uh this and the the circles will change color to like yellow and etc so that um you can sort of quickly see the effect for example we have this unit this um sort of bridge unit down here um, let me just yeah this this heavy anti-tank battalion no so that's not the right one uh, the engineers battalion and you can see that they're not that well supplied so you can click over here and you can see the which hq takes support of that then you can move the hq forward to make sure that you're handling this properly but let me go back to the information then here you can see the anti-aircraft value the stacking size so this is just telling you like um the size of the unit and you could combine them into like stronger units but you can't exceed the hex limit the stacking size also affect your zone of control so essentially it can like make it more difficult for the enemies to move to a zone of control it doesn't stop them fully sometimes in war games zone of control just means like you can't bypass the enemy at all hey it's more like it makes it it makes them cost more movement to get through this particular part and then here you can see just your regular attack, your regular defense, and then how many remaining moves you have. And then some units also have a shock value. So you can see that over here. So this, this symbol, it's it, the moment I hover on it, it's going to change the information. So it can be quite difficult, but this sort of like lightning symbol right below my mouse, this is to giving you the shock value. And the shocks is really important important because it shifts the off of an attack by the shock value. So this can be really huge because it can um, it can really just make it a lot easier for you to win the game. Uh, sorry, the, not the game, the the combat itself. Okay, because it kind of like shifts the odds of that. And then here you can obviously sort of hover over other information. So like the unit is currently dug in. And then like Intel strength, so you can get information about surrounding units, Intel range, and etc. This is important because in this game, even if you see an enemy unit, you don't necessarily automatically know their stats. So again, in a lot of war games, the moment you see enemy unit, uh, let me actually just click so we can jump to the next one while I'm talking. Oh, actually, no, we can't do that. Okay, so we'll do it in a moment. But in, in typical war games, we... Um, the moment you sort of see an enemy unit, they come out of fog of war, you can typically see all of their stats. This is not the case in this game. You can, for right now, we don't see enemy any enemy units. We can get to a position where we'll be able to see an enemy, but we still don't know their stats. So that's why the intel is important. Now, speaking of intel and learning about enemies, we do have some air force that we can use to gain recon. Now, these two planes do not allow me to get... Um, to do like bombardment, but eventually you might be able to do bombardment. So let me... Uh, click oh actually i misclicked that let me click one here and one there so that we can see information and we can also gain intel so this intel again allows you to sort of learn information about these different areas i'm also going to put down here but again and i'm not going to be focusing on much down there i mostly just want to show you all the stuff around so we're just going to finish our turn here proceed to the next one and the enemy now did their preparation phase as well so as i said over here for some enemy units we can see kind of their stats so we can see, okay, this is their, uh, some of their values. This is infantry cavalry battalion. And uh, yeah, we can see some information about their attacks and etc. And it's also some information about their defensive order. So they're supposed to hold and they don't have any shock value. But there are also some units like this one where we just, we don't have a clue. We just know there's something there, but we don't know. So, and now this is a simultaneous turn-based combat game. So you're not just going to move your tank and attack. Instead, what you can do is you can tell them, for example, hey, let's move over here. And if on the path to getting there, we will meet some enemy units, 
we will fight them. But if not, then we won't, which I think is like really, really cool and quite sort of unusual, I would say. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for that. Let's move our sort of, uh, I guess, infantry unit just like a little bit closer. Uh, we can't get past this river, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. But we are going to attack a little bit with some of our other units. So let's just move forward like so. Now, then you can click on your infantry and you can click, I believe, S to strike. So it's R, not S, my mistake. So you're going to click R and then you're going to click on enemy units. So for example, I can click, hey, I want you to shoot this one. So we're going to focus on shooting there or we can we can change it, etc. We had multiple, so we click them on them over here. So I'm going to move this unit away. Oh, I can't. So let's just click on the second one. Okay. So we're going to go here and we're going to click R. I'm gonna move the infantry away. Let me just do this. Okay, and now this artillery, we're gonna use it to attack. Because I'm not in range of anybody. I think maybe I can't attack because I moved. Yeah, my apologies. Okay, let, let's move over here then. And we'll set this up to shoot at these guys. So I find the easiest way to sort of uh, manipulate is if you just sort of, as I'm hovering, I'm moving my mouse up and down, I'm changing between the different units. So the first one is anti-tank, and then I'm just sort of right clicking to choose it, and I'm clicking R on the keyboard, or you can click on the menu, and then you can just kind of click on the enemies. It's sort of like the easiest way to navigate through this. This is anti-tank. It's not going to help us out. Do we have any more artillery? Um, no, I don't think so. Let me just look. This is not artillery. Oh yeah, we have artillery here. So again, right click, click R and we want to shoot. Oh, maybe we don't have a range over here. Yeah, you can see it. So we're actually just going to shoot uh, up here as well, just to make sure we're, we're hitting some people up. I'm actually going to move with this particular artillery closer. And I, we're going to have to check whether we can still shoot. We can't. So once you move, you can't shoot. So you're going to be a little bit more careful about that. We probably should have taken a little bit more care when uh, prepping this, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to click R on, let's say, this one over here. And maybe this one. And I think we're done with all of our artilleries. Uh, we can move some of our units a little bit further. This is a motorized regimen. So let's move up closer. And I'm also going to move some of my anti things in, ch in case they try to do some of the similar things to what we did, where they essentially kind of try to push uh, behind the enemy lines, which is our lines in this case, with their things. You might want to be a little bit more ready with our. So I'm going to move the HQs like a little bit closer. So we should double click this and then just carry the whole thing like that. Now, also, you can right click on any hex to see sort of information about the hex itself, but it gives any kind of a bonuses and etc. So this is something really important. So let's um, let's actually click play because now we're going to get to the battle phase, which I think is the most exciting part. Okay, not yet because we've got our stuff. So uh, can we shoot? No, I think it's just Intel. So we're just going to click on Intel, I guess, over here. And then you can click on Intel over there. And we've got some Intel that we can add. Yeah, I think we're fine. Let's just go. We'll leave it doesn't matter all right so this is going to be the battle phase it's just it's just really fun it's quite unusual so the the battle phase works in stages the first thing that's going to happen is that they're going to start so first of all you can see here so we can sort of move through every action slowly and first the the artilleries will start shooting so we're going to hit play and you're going to see that our artilleries are going to sort of slowly attack wherever we have ordered them to. All right, so you can now see, so you can you can pause and you can click on this to gain some additional information. So the the defender health, there were unfortunately no losses. So this is actually a pretty bad attack for this. So let's just see if we can do better somewhere else, maybe here. Uh, yeah, not really. We're not really doing much damage here apparently. So didn't do so hot so let's just start doing okay how about here yes no oh come on 
<laughs> but you can see the strength, the defensive bonus here, and additional information. You can see who attacked, and you can see the stats of the defending units. And if you did any losses, you're going to be able to, to hear, see like how many men you have lost. I think you should have been focusing more on like a single... Ooh, there, so you can actually see here that there's like a bunch of stacked units here. So what is really cool is once you attack, you can actually get that additional information. Uh, yeah, we're not doing particularly hard on our attacks, but that's okay. And you can now see that we're sort of moving forward with our units and we're going to go into combat very soon, as soon as we sort of catch up with them and attack them properly. Can you see a battle somewhere? We're moving in. This is just the attack. Okay, so let's just keep, keep it. Okay, here. So here we can see the fight. So we can see uh, the basic odds. So the total attack value, the total defense value, uh, how many attackers we have, how many defenders. And again, you can see the result, like how many vehicles were lost. Uh, uh, the, the enemy withdrew, so they uh, sort of failed. And um, how many vehicles were lost and sort of like the general result on, and the shifts over here and etc. So all of the things you need to know about the attack. You can also zoom out if you want to see sort of like all of the attacks at once. And you could also sort of do it like step by step if you wanted to, or you can just let this go this way. It doesn't really, it's kind of up to you. So I'm going to let this continue and we're moving through. And again, because the attacks are simultaneous, those sort of turns, you don't always know like where the attack is going to go and like who is going to fight where. So we're going to just click yes and we're going to see so we can see that we killed some of the enemy units we moved through and then in, uh, or so for example here they sort of held and we didn't really move through there but because we fought we now get that information about the units where we're sort of surrounding them immediately and now we sort of continue with the same thing so we can set up the new attacks so we can say hey i want you to shoot over here and then uh, similarly with these other ones uh, we can just sort of go and attack and so on so we can say we want to attack most of the units over here uh okay now we might have okay so we actually have now attacking plane at this turn so you can click here from recon attack to transport and you can click on a unit and you can again set up sort of like a, an attack for these planes so you can say you want to attack over here and you can sort of set this up you can have them all attacking the same thing uh, some of them do strike some of them do attacks i'm not entirely sure what the difference is Maybe it depends on the type of the plane. I don't know. We seem to have only attacks here, but sometimes you can say S as a sort of strike. So it can be something a little bit different. And then you could use some of your uh, airplanes to also transport if you wanted to. And then Intel, we can, uh, again, just like set up some Intel and etc. So we're not going to worry about that right now. On the left top here, you can see a lot of more information. So you can see the units. You can see a sort of like the counter air, so like if any planes were a uh, number of air units that uh, were assigned to counter air missions, a uh, number of units that um, were assigned to counter air mission for the specific uh, like side, the allies and the axis and etc. And the effects of anti-air attacks. Here you can see the information of interdiction missions. Uh, reinforcements when they're coming and etc future reinforcements and uh, how much fuel you uh, you or the enemy lost ammo personnel and etc so for example we could check over here how much fuel we lost etc ammo and so on so we can see all the information over here here you can see the result of your anti-air attacks and uh, uh, bombers and here you can see your supply information, so you can click on different HQ and you can see the set supply, uh, who they're supposed to supply and etc. So you can see the information over here. Like I said, this is going to be, uh, sorry, I just kind of messed that up. Uh, this is going to be in for, in, important for the different supplies. So again, like I said, you can see here that, for example, this unit is not so well supplied. Here you can see, the or you can reassign divisional HQs. Uh, you can see here, again, sort of like the HQ hierarchy and then... This is just, I guess, to allow you to just see the HQs by themselves so that you don't have you don't have to worry about like clicking through other missions and etc. And here you can sort of hide all your units so you can just see sort of like the 
um, how do I say this, the like orders that she had. I think this might be for movement, but we don't actually have any movement set up, so let me just um, go away from the airplanes and just like click on somebody. I'm still in the airplane mode, I gotta I gotta get out of there because I'm just setting up. So yeah, I, I think that if you set up like some movement here, you might be able to see it here. Yeah, so actually this is showing you like which units still have movement left. So I set this up to move, so now if I click this, it's showing me, hey, this unit already moves so it can move, but all of these other ones can still move. Here you can see the orders. So remember, this is essentially telling you like whether you, you have the orders to hold or hold at all costs or withdraw. So you can change that if you want to. And uh, if you click this sort of O thing, you can sort of adjust that. You can click on the order and you can say, hey, I want you to withdraw, for example, right? So you can get that information here. And here you can see what is set up everywhere. This shift is telling you movement. And this is showing you like after you do the movement, where you're going to jump to. And then here you can again try to see like the information about a uh, zone of control. Here you can see anti-aircraft ranges, a recon, shark values, um, lines of communication, supply levels, unit quality, uh, unit readiness, unit strength. A unit uh, dug in state, a toggle victory on he hexes on and off, and finally show map hex side effects. So for example, this is done, I say you can cross over there. Now, this allows you to toggle between the uh, sort of uh, picture and NATO unit icons, and this is showing you a night capable unit. So this is the only night capable unit that we have and i actually think that uh, oh and this is also showing you if you had naval units which we obviously don't have for this mission now um i think we're actually going to end the episode here like i said this was just like a quick introduction so that you can see if this game is something you might be interested in and you can click on the right towards some other war games that i play on this channel i'll see you there bye bye